Hi, I'm Peter Cowan, the Bee Whisperer. I am just out in the backyard at the moment and uh, just uh, having a look at the goldenrod and things seem to be changing. Up until yesterday, I hadn't seen any bees on the early goldenrod yet. Uh, I did see them this morning and they were getting plenty of pollen. But now we're seeing something different. These are all over the goldenrod and they're getting nectar. Now, this doesn't mean there's a honey flow on here yet, but this is a very promising sign. This early species of goldenrod rarely produces a nectar flow, but we have had so much rain that maybe this year things will be different. But I have these all over this golden rod in really high concentrations. And you normally only get that if there's something there for them. And as opposed to this morning where they were just collecting up pollen, these bees are sticking their tongues right in the flower and appear to be getting nectar. And when there's that many of them doing it, that is a promising sign. Oh, by the way, in my area where I've been planting seeds out in the back here, I'm not having a great deal of flowers yet. It was, took a while to get things going. But uh, it should be good in the long run. I see plenty of uh, things like poppies and things coming up. Some of my sunflowers, I planted a lot of sunflowers, but the chipmunks got the got a, got the bit bulk of them. But uh, with any luck, we'll be getting some sunflowers coming up pretty soon. So that is this sort of area in the back of my house, about a quarter acre or so of area. I'm going to let grow. We'll see what comes of it. Now, my hives aren't far away, so you'd expect that any flowers producing nectar will be absolutely be covered with these. Uh, I was sitting a walk in the way in the back last night and in the evening there were still bees, some of which were on that goldenrod. But look at them all on that goldenrod. Most of them with their tongues down in there getting nectar. very promising sign. Yesterday when I was making those nukes that I put the video on today, there was a slight whiff of goldenrod in the air. People who have been keeping bees for a little while will tell, will tell you that when there is a goldenrod honey flow, you can smell it, sort of like dirty socks, sweaty socks. Oh, and uh, right now, I can't, can't smell any of that, and I wouldn't say that the yard is busy at all. So we haven't got a strong honey flow on, but nor do I see much uh, in the way of clustering on the entrance. So we may get that goldenrod honey flow really early this year. Wouldn't that be nice? As I say, it's way too early to say but I've got a fair amount of goldenrod around here a lot of that early species of goldenrod but typically this stuff doesn't produce much nectar but I've been very keen to see what happened when the when uh, the Sun starts working on these plants after all that rain
and what's more is we're getting another inch of rain inch and a half of rain that's maybe two to three or four centimeters of rain tomorrow night or tonight and tomorrow but look at all these bees on this goldenrod the goldenrod is wonderful for getting a, a, a good flow of pollen into the hives and can produce an awful lot of honey I've seen a goldenrod flow where healthy hives will fill two medium supers a week so keep an eye on things this looks very promising indeed I've never seen this density of honeybees on the goldenrod but they've got very little else there's not much else producing nectar and so you can get all sorts of strange things happening for example right now I get lots of calls uh, from people with hummingbird feeders hummingbird feeders typically will only have um, four to one sugar syrup in there four parts water to one part sugar syrup and normally the honeybees won't touch it when there's a dearth on it gets mobbed by honeybees and when that happens I get the phone call saying bees won't let my hummingbirds get at the feeder what can I do and what I tell them to do is don't put anything in your hunting hummingbird feeder let them find for something find something else for now this is a type of mint I think I can't remember exactly what it is it goes all over the place. This is normally absolutely full of honeybees when the dearth is on. There's a fair few honeybees here, but not as heavily populated as it usually is. That might mean that the bees are going elsewhere. The other thing we'll do is have a look at that uh, observation hive and see if there's uh, anything accumulating in the observation hive. They don't look that busy. So I'm not really expecting much. And any little bit helps at this time of year. If there's some feeding going on during the dearth, that keeps the populations of bees growing stronger and keeps them rearing brood, nice healthy brood. So when I swap this out, I put in a comb of virtually only foundation. Well, just a little bit of, um, just a little bit of comb being built on it. So they have been building comb. And there is some food in there. I would say there's a long way to go before we can consider ourselves having a honey flow. The other thing you can do with an observation hive is smell it. I can't smell any goldenrod honey being cured in here yet. But as I say, say, I only saw the first glimpses of it yesterday and the first real signs of it today. So the next couple of days will tell. Maybe not tomorrow because it was going to rain all day. But uh, in the coming days, we'll know. And if we do get a honey flow from the early goldenrod, and with a bit of luck, the following goldenrod, the goldenrod that follows it, oh, wouldn't that be interesting? So, have one more look. Mother Nature is giving us a, an outlier of a year this year. As the uh, weather folks in Bangor are saying, we've now had the third wettest July on record. And if we get a third of an inch before the end of July, we will have broken the all-time all record. And they're expecting an inch to an inch and a half. So this will, after tomorrow, officially be the wettest July on record in this area. So if anything unusual is going to happen, this is the year it's going to be.
and that would be really good timing for those nukes I'm just getting started because uh, new overwintering nukes, making overwintered nukes during the dearth can be a bit challenging. It means you have to do a lot of feeding, but if I can get a honey flow now, I'll have to not have to do the feeding, which would be wonderful. The uh, Those overwintered nukes will be ones that uh, I will overwinter uh, on top of my double deeps here uh, and will be some of the first ones I'm selling in the spring. So looking forward to seeing how that goes. Anyway, let's uh, hope this uh, activity on the goldenrod turns into a real honey flow. That would be fantastic. So watch this space. We'll know in a few more days. I'm Peter Cowan, the Bee Whisperer. See you next time.